still looking at some of the Paris stuff. And actually, again, getting it from the chat room, uh, Swagger Prance, and noted it. Yeah, it's on Billboard. Hostages taken at Eagles of Death Metal concert. So there you have it. Okay. Well, maybe just that, Eagles, because uh, you remember that shooting? We had There was a shooting in, uh, was it uh, New Orleans, not, near New Orleans, uh, Louisiana. And it turned out that the shooting was at the opening of the Amy Schumer movie. And now she's Chuck Schumer's cousin. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And now and they're and together the, on uh, gun control. Gun right. It was, uh, I don't know, a a apropos, convenient, a nice coincidence. Eagles of death metal. Well, there's a lot to be said there regarding mm -hmm. image, imagery, mm -hmm. right? To, from eagles to death to metal. <laughs> um, exactly. It's all. It is all in there. It's because uh, what the, the eagles sort of that isn't that one of the, those other kind of phony American symbols that we stole from some other country that means uh, the opposite of what we sort of sell it as. <laughs> I think it's like ah, it's a fascist origins, but don't ask. Well, don't kill Josh, though. Don't do not do that. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't... Uh, I don't know if he has his own Twitter account. Uh, Jesse Hughes, Josh Ohm, Jesse Hughes. Uh, oh, Je Jesse Hughes is the other guy in the band? Yeah, That's the right, devil. Yeah. As soon as you uh, said that. Electric, J-Devil. <laughs> Some of the... His uh, nicknames. <laughs> huh. Um, now I wonder, and again, this would take people there who are more familiar with the scene than I, is it, is it possible that's one of the bigger clubs and on tonight they were one of the biggest, bigger shows going oh, on sure. in the city, so that was the place well, to go to? No, they'll, they'll tell us they, they represent the decadence of the infidels, so... <laughs> <laughs> Not just because it wouldn't have worked if you went to some cafe where some guy was playing French songs by himself and a or guitar. even at an Eagles concert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, huh. I don't know. Well, Gladio. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it, it has to be. Look, I mean, there are there are real terrorists out there. Um, they generally don't do anything too big. Uh, there are real shooters out mm -hmm. there, people who have uh, incidentally gone crazy from wireless transmission, radiation, video games, and the news, <laughs> and our film industry today. Uh, they are programmed either directly or indirectly, as, as I like to say. Uh, well, but when, that's something, when something this big happens, it generally, um, you know, the funding has to be there. The organization has to be there. Uh, there are ears everywhere, eyes everywhere. So it's more difficult to get away with this than ever before. And it just, it just makes you think it's almost impossible to pull off something this big that's happening now in Paris without some kind of uh, operational effort from up above. And... It I'm sure all of this will spill out, and I'm sure it'll all spill out later. But you kind of mentioned, you said even, you know, the film industry. I had, because uh, something that I was able to do, and the good thing about, and just like you said, you know, if you, the choices you make, you may now look back and go, ah, crap, I shouldn't have done it that way. But I wouldn't be here now, and I wouldn't have the knowledge and the experience that I do have. Because I can look at it now and go, ah, crap, I should have never have walked away from media monarchy because of the same thing. I feel like I'm starting over in some ways. I feel like I'm coming back to something I kind of don't understand anymore, and the people and everything have all kind of changed, even though it was only three years and I never really left. But it all has really kind of changed a lot. Um... One of the things I did learn about going and seeing how the sausage is made is how kind of easy it is to get in contact with bands, artists, authors, thinkers, whoever. Once you kind of figure out, oh, I got to get their publicist or, you know, just you figure out the right person to get in touch with. So I was able to kind of take some of the publishing contacts with me that I'd made while I worked in the radio station. So I've been able to still get new books and talk to cool kind of you know darker authors and basically tell them hey anything that has to do with you know sex drugs rock and roll the occult technology you know news and politics i'm interested in those so i interviewed a guy yesterday named adam rockoff who has a book called the horror of it all and it's sort of like if you know chuck klosterman the music writer his kind of one of his most famous books is called fargo rock city about growing up in nowhere and loving metal 
this guy's book is basically growing up in Jersey and it's a sort of a similar thing, but he does it with horror films. So I talked to him and we really didn't talk specifically about horror films all that much. I kind of talked about, you know, the cultural horrors and religious hypocrisy. And we talked about the PMRC and satanic panic and backwards maskings and, and in the way being brought up, you know, in the church, like I was, that you sort of look now with, again, the experience and say, oh, you guys hosed me on what to be afraid of. You told me to freak out about Garbage Pail Kids and Dungeons and Dragons, but you didn't tell me about the lies and the war and the destruction that you guys all seem to willingly vote for. So in a lot of ways, I think horror movies and all those things to me sort of point back to sometimes the hypocrisy of culture, if that makes any sense. But it's also part of a sick stew, I think, where people are much more unhealthy on Every, well, yeah, every level. no, uh, but see, I would say that I'm a, a little older than you, so I would say that, and it would sound like "get off my lawn," uh, <laughs> but, you know, uh, because again, it, look, I'm raising a, a, a young man; he's uh, uh, twelve and a half years old, and in the things, the, our lives are so different from me when I grew up and when he's growing up, and sometimes there is a generation gap, and. And even though I went to school for computers, for computer science, okay, I got a degree, sometimes he has to tell me how to use the computer, you know. <laughs> so it's, um, you know, it's quite different, and I, I worry about it. And one of the reasons I stick in here through thick and thin and uh, suffer poverty and, and uh, every form of sacrifice, death threats, and the rest of it, James, is, is for this generation. So I believe in them. Uh, there are a lot of good things, not just bad things. If you listen to the Democrats and the Republicans, they'll always, you know, talk about how horrible our children are and how horrible things have been for them. Uh, there are some great advantages. They are beautiful in their own way, and I have to believe, and I guess that's my stupid crutch of a paradigm that I still have left. That that I still have quote unquote hope. I still believe that it's possible to, whether it's, you know, piece by piece or one big bite, uh, that, that we can restore liberty, that we can put safeguards in place uh, from the uh, Global Corp uh, savages, that we can teach people to be positive consumers, to put their time, effort, life force, money, what have you, into things that bring uh, positiveness uh, to their life and, and uh, not uh, more more uh, slavery, et cetera. So I have to, I have to have that, or I cannot go on. I, I realize it's a paradigm, but what am I to do? <laughs> uh, well, and you even said 12. I mean, I've got a nephew now that just turned 11, which blows my mind. And to sort of think about that and worry about, you know, the generation coming up. And, you know, thinking a lot of times like you look around and you go oh my god we are screwed these guys are going to be the dumbest kids that we've ever seen they're going to be spoiled and they're only going to know how to hold a screen two inches away from their face but they're also going to get rid of a lot of the bs problems that we've never been able to figure out how to you know learn our way forward through so that's the thing and it's like bill hicks said you know these are the things that have kept us you know poor and unpopular all through these years doing our work over and over again yeah right well no it will be remembered long after we're dead just not so much while we're alive uh james evan Pilato is with us media monarchy is back in a rare form, and you can find it right on this channel somewhere here at MXLR. I just call it Mixler. Mixler at Media Monarchy, or go to MediaMonarchy.com, or put James Evan Palato or Media Monarchy into Twitter or Facebook because he is a social media maniac. <laughs> uh, uh, here it is, EODM, Eagles of Death Metal. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Jack Blood Show, Friday the 13th. Bad day in Paris.